have given me a tag that says VIP. Menipa kipachi chenye kinasema VIP. And someone might come and say you're a VIP. Na mtu anaweza kuja akasema wewe ni VIP. After I hear it enough times I might even actually begin to believe it. Na nikisikia mara nyingi ninaanza kuamini. And if I believed it I would become very puffed up inside. Na nikiamini hiyo nitakuwa na kiburi. And I would think that I am something when I am nothing. <laughs> but the Lord has put into my heart a safeguard. <coughs> it would be a very dangerous thing to have a worldwide ministry of healing. It could easily destroy a man or woman. It can be a very dangerous thing to be blessed by God. Because we can take that blessing to ourselves. And think we are the source of it. And in Philippians, Paul says, and please, can we use the King James version of the Bible, the King James? Paul says, let nothing be done through strife or for vain glory. Vain glory is any glory that does not have the humility of God as its foundation. Utukufu wa kibure ama wa kibinafsi ni ule wenye hauna mungu kama msingi wake. That's why a novice is not to roll. Sasa. A novice in the faith, a newly one come to the faith. Mtu mwenye ame okoka juzi hivi ama mchanga kiro. He hasn't, his heart hasn't been revealed to him. Moyo wake haujafunuliwa hasua kwake. He has not yet come to the place where he has utterly fainted and fallen. Isaiah said even the young men shall utterly faint and fall. But they that wait upon the Lord will exchange their weakness for his strength. But until you utterly faint and fall, you may continue on in your own strength which is really weakness and so what the Lord will do is he will come and he will oh this is going to be he will overemphasize your weakness he will make it so obvious you cannot miss it. The Lord will do that in our lives. He would like to be subtle about it. But, but sometimes we're not smart enough to catch it. Paul says in Romans chapter 7 that the Lord comes and shows us our sin. And then he shows it to us so that we see it as being exceeding sinful. He so emphasizes it, we can't miss it. And that is what causes us to say, O oh, wretched man that I am. And he will show us our weakness in following him. He said to the disciples, Where I'm going, you cannot follow me now. But afterward, you shall follow me. After your strength has been brought to nothing and you are leaning upon my strength 
Many years ago, I was in Nakuru. Miaka mingi iliyopita nilikuwa Nakuru. We had been in South Africa. We came here to Kenya. Tulikuwa na Benin, South Africa, ama Afrika Kusini na tuka kujia hapa Kenya. While we were in South Africa, one of the fellows that was with me said, "Tulipokuwa Afrika Kusini katia moja watu wetu akasema." If the Lord makes me any smaller, I'm not going to be able to stand it. <laughs> I knew exactly what he was saying. Well, do you know what? The Lord made us smaller. We came to Kenya. And then to Nakuru. I was supposed to speak in the first service the next Sunday morning. The Lord made me so weak inside that I was, in my heart, I began to resign from the ministry. I was writing my resignation as pastor of the church. I was overwhelmed with my own weakness. I had utterly fainted and fallen. Nilikuwa nimezimia na kuanguka. Now I've shared this here a couple years ago. Niliongea na watu fulani miaka chache iliyopita. But I I feel to do it again. Na nikahisi nifanye tena. Niseme tena. And so I had utterly fainted and fallen. I could not go on. Nilikuwa nimezimia na kuanguka. Sikuwa na nguvu ya kuendelea tena. In here there was absolutely no strength whatsoever. Ndani mwangu hakukuwa na nguvu tena. And I said to my pastor friend who was with me, Would you please preach for me in the first service? I have nothing. <laughs> I could speak from here up. But in here there was nothing. He was across the hall. I went back into my room. When I shut the door, I heard this voice. That takes care of the first service. What are you going to do for the second service? Because I was going to have to speak for the second service. I said, I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. <laughs> Do you, know that, do you know that saying here? We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Well, the next morning we came to the service. There were 3,000 people. And the, the pulpit was in the front. And they had four of us wazungus. Standing there in the front looking at the pulpit. I was so empty inside. But I looked over and there was a little boy uh, with his mother. He was, I found out later, he was 12 years old. I found out his name was Ricky. I called him Little Ricky. Na jina lake alikuwa anaitwa Ricky na nikamuita mtoto Ricky. They worshiped the Lord for quite some time. Wakaabudu kwa muda fulani. I kept saying in my heart, Lord, if you do not help me, I am finished. Na nika ndani mwangu niko naambia Bwana usiponisaidia mimi nimeisha. Utterly fainted and fallen. When you utterly fall, you have no strength to get up. And you don't even think about trying to raise yourself up. It's an effort, it's a futile effort. So after everybody was done worshiping the Lord, the pastor said, before our speaker comes to speak, 
Let's all go around and tell someone that we love them. Na mchungaji akasema kabla ya kualika muhubiri ahubiri tuenende kwa kila mtu tuseme ninakupenda. I didn't have any love to give. Sikuwa na upendo wote wa kupeana. I was so self-centered. Nilikuwa ninajiangalia kiundani niko na ubinafsi. Do you have pity parties here in Kenya? Je, kuna watu wenye wanajihurumia hapa Kenya? Do you ever have a pity party for yourself? Watu wenye wanajihurumia, umeshawaijihurumia wewe mwenyewe? Do you know Elijah had a pity party for himself? Unajua Elia alianza kujihurumia yeye mwenyewe. It's one thing for me to have a pity party. Hata pia mimi nikawa najihurumia. But for Elijah? Lakini kwa Elia, he had just called fire down from heaven. Ameita moto umeshatoka mbinguni. He would think that man is invincible. You would think that there is nothing that could defeat him. And in his heart he said, It is enough, O Lord, let me die. <laughs> it didn't matter what was going on out there. It was what mattered going on in here. I folded my hands, I put my head down. Woe is me. <laughs> when the pastor said that, and I had my eyes closed, do you know God chooses or God's choices are not our choices. God chooses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. If we're thinking like the world, we won't choose with God. God chooses the weak things or that which seems like there's no power in them. Mungu huchakua fitu zenye zinaka dhaifu, zenye hazina nguvu. And Jesus was crucified in weakness. Na Yesu alisulubishwa kwa udhaifu. But the weakness of God is stronger than the strength of men. Lakini udhaifu wa mwenyezi mungu ni hodari kuliko nguvu za wanadamu. And no matter how weak the outward appears to be, na haijalishi if God is in it it's stronger than all of the strength of man so all the strength of the religious leaders was coming against Jesus all of the strength of the Roman soldiers and government was coming against Jesus and he was being crucified in weakness but the excellency of the power that was in him was of God and whatsoever is born of God always, always, always wins the victory Na chochote chenye kimezaliwa na mungu kila mara, kila mara huwa kina pata ushindi. God remains undefeated. Mungu huwa anabaki hashindui. And whenever he is moving through you, na kama atakuwa na ishinda ni mwako, you will not be defeated. Wewe hauta shindua kamwe. Whatsoever and whosoever is born of God always wins the victory. As I closed my eyes and folded my hands, almost immediately, I felt these two arms around my waist. And I looked down and it was little Ricky giving me a hug. <laughs> and I 
I opened my eyes and looked down at him and he was looking up at me with this big smile on his face. Na nikaangalia chini kumwangalia na yeye anaangalia juu na akitasamu akitapasamu. He must have felt I needed a double portion and I did. Ana nafikiria alikuwa anasema nahitaji maradufu. He came over on this side and hugged me again. Akaja nyuma yangu tena ananikumbatia. And he brought me or the Lord brought me up out of a horrible pit. Na Mungu akanitoa katika shimo tena. And I went from being totally weak. Na nika inuliwa kutoka mahali pa udhaifu to being totally strong nikawa na uhodari i said where is the microphone i've got to preach na nikaangalia wapi microphone kipaza sauti nikaupi and the lord said in effect you've given up that right you'll have to wait to the second service na bwana kaniambia wewe ulipeana ibada ya kwanza mpaka utangoja ibada ya pili i could not wait to get up to preach ngoja tena kuisimama kuhubiri now you know when you have services here in kenya they want the first service ended at this time and the second at this time na unajua tukiwa na ibada tofauti ibada ya kwanza inaanza muda fulani na malizika ili ibada ya pili ianze muda fulani hivyo hivyo and god had other plans that day na Mungu alikuwa na When it finally came time for me to speak. Wakati ilikuwa wakati wangu kusimama kuhubiri. I did not walk up to the pulpit. Sikutembea mpaka kwa madhabahu. I did in my physical body. Sikufanya kwa mwili wangu. But in the spirit I was mounting up with wings as eagles. Lakini ndani ya moyo wangu nilikuwa na paa kama tai. Have you ever flown like an eagle? Je, umeshawahi paa kama tai? What an experience in God. Ilikuwa tukio namna gani na Mungu. And when I got up there, wakati nilisimama pale, my flesh could not glory in anything. Wow, nafsi yangu ama mwili wangu haungetukuka kwa jambo lolote. Because the Lord showed me how nothing I am without him. Kwa sababu Bwana alinitambulisha chinzia mimi ni kitu bure kama sifyo yeye. And he laid in me the foundation of humility. Na akaweka msingi wa unyenyekevu. So that no matter what exaltation he might have given to me, hata haikujalisha ni kuchochewa kani wenye amenipa. My flesh could not glory in it because it had no part in it. Mwili wangu singepokea utukufu wowote wa mwili. I felt like an eagle looking over my domain. Nikawa kama tai mwenye anatawala sehemu yake. I, I wish it was always like that when I was preaching but it's not. Laiti ningekuwa namna hiyo kila mara nikihubiri. And the spirit of God came and moved and moved and moved. Na roho wa Bwana akatembea na kutembea na kutembea. We forgot about time. Tukasahau kuhusu muda. And the Lord had his way. Na Bwana akawa na njia yake. No one had any idea of the source of the blessing of that service. Hakuna yeyote mwenye alitambua chanzo cha baraka kwa ibada ile. The Lord used a 12-year-old boy to bless the people. Bwana alitumia kijana wa miaka 12 kubariki watu wake. Let me give you a picture uh, maybe that will help put things in perspective. Wacha niwape picha hii ili tukaweze kuelewa. A man may come into this pulpit or a woman. Uh, mtu anaweza kuja hapa wa kiume au umke. And the power of God and the anointing may flow through them and you look at them and say wow na nguvu za Mungu na upako unaweza pitia juu yao ikafanya kazi ukasema eh hey, but it's not just them who are ministering to you lakini sio tu wale wenye walikuwa wakihudumu it is everyone in the body of Christ who has ministered to them lakini ni kila mmoja ya watu katika mwili wa Kristo ambao wamehudumia yule mtu and if the lord were to come and say now i want to bring in all the people who will have a part in this message na bwana nikana kwamba anasema nataka nilete watu 
wote wenye wamekuwa sehemu ya ujumbe huu one after another after another would come into the room mmoja kwa mwingine watakuja katika i would think eventually paul the apostle would come into the room nafikiri hata paulo pia angekuja katika ile jengo How many of you have been ministered to by Paul the Apostle? Huh? How many of you have been ministered to by Job? God took Job and put him on, an, on the ash heap. To give him a worldwide ministry. <laughs> and it wasn't limited to the time Whenever he was alive, Job, though dead, yet speaketh. And I would not be here today had it not been, and I could tell you, I could give you their names. That poured the grace of God into my life. One right after another after another. And when the Lord found me, the deceitfulness of my heart was taking me on a path of destruction. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, who redeemeth thy life from destruction. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, who healeth all of thy soul's diseases. I was a sin sick soul. From the sole of my foot to the top of my head, there was no soundness in it. Only wounds and putrefying sores, open sores. But the Lord began healing my diseases. And he redeemed my life from destruction. When David was saying that, he wasn't talking about Goliath. He was talking about the destruction that the deceitfulness of his heart was taking him to. Alikuwa anaongelea kuhusu uharibifu wa moyo wake penye ilikuwa ikielekea. Now in Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah sura ya 30. The prophet is sent to the people of Israel. Nabii anatumwa kwa watu wa Israeli. And the message that he gives them verse 9 through 15. Na ujumbe wenye aliwapatia kutoka mstari wa 9 mpaka 15. We can go back to verse uh, Yes, verse 9. Well, verse 8. You have to read verse 8 also. He tells Isaiah, go and write this on a table so that they, they, don't, they can't miss it. Verse 9. Verse 9. We can read this together. That this is a rebellious people, lying children, children who will not hear the law of the Lord. Anasema kwa maana watu hawa ni watu waasi, watoto wasemao uongo, watoto wasiotaka sheria ya Bwana. Please put this on King James if you will, if you can. Uh, tafsiri ya King James, tafadhali. Which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, but prophesy unto us deceits. Well, Or Wawambiao waonaji msione na manabii mstoe unabii wa mambo ya haki tuambieni maneno laini hubirini maneno ya danganyayo What they are really saying is this Chenye wanasema ni hiki Tickle our ears with smooth things Chokosa masikio yetu na vitu vyema We have itching ears to hear that what we are doing is the will of God tuna masikio yenye imechokozwa kusikia chenye tunafanya ni mapenzi ya Mungu we want god to approve the deceitfulness of our own heart tutaka mungu atie mhuri 
kwa udanganyifu wa moyo wetu our own self-centered ways njia zetu ovu we do not want someone bringing us the true word of god hatutaki mtu atuletee neno la ukweli na mwenyezi mungu for that is a sharp two-edged sword that stabs us in our heart kwa sababu ule ni upanga wenye unaumiza roho zetu and it shows us that we are not walking in the truth but we are walking after a lie na inatuonyesha ya kwamba sisi tunatembea kwa uongo wala sio ukweli it uncovers our nakedness inatutoa uwazi and it kills our flesh na inaua mwili zetu now it was the same thing in paul's day na ni kitu chenye kilikuwa kinatendeka It's the same thing today. Na ni kitu chenye kinatendeka sasa hivi. The true gospel is not very popular. Injili ya kweli sio wazi. Our, our brother was speaking this morning on uh, self what is that realization yeah. bring self out. Ah uh, ndiku yetu alikuwa akitufunza kuhusu ku As one prophet of God said, the Lord will kill you dead. <laughs> How else could you say it's no longer I that liveth? <laughs> But Christ that liveth in me. And of course Paul knew that that's what the heart of man was. Paul knew that that's what the heart of man was. So he tells Timothy preach the word. Anaambia Timotheo ubiri neno. And by the way, remember yesterday I said that there are some scriptures we find it very hard to fit into our theology. Na nilisema jana hivi ya kwamba kuna maandiko yenye tunaona utata kuileta katika mioyo zetu. Paul says God sent me not to baptize. Paul anasema Mungu hakunituma kupatiza watu. He said I'm glad I didn't baptize any of you. Na anasema ninashukurani si kupatiza yoyote kati yenu. What are you talking about Paul? Paulo unasema nini hapa? Don't we all have to be baptized? Unasema sisi tusipatizwe? He said well God didn't send me to baptize. Anasema Mungu hakunituma kupatiza watu. He sent me to preach the word. Alinituma nikahubiri neno. For the word of God is the power of God unto salvation. Kwa sababu neno la Mungu ni nguvu za Mwenyezi Mungu kwa wokovu. So that if we are rejecting the word of God, sasa tunapokataa neno la Mungu, we are rejecting our own salvation. Tunakataa wokovu wetu. Now don't walk out and say Jake Luffy said don't get baptized. I didn't say that. <laughs> Paul didn't say that. He baptized. But what he was saying is put the emphasis on the right thing. Don't baptize in water and then not preach the word. Usipatize watu kwa maji na haubiri injili. Because if you don't preach the word and people don't hear the word then they cannot be birthed of the spirit and if they are not birthed from the spirit they cannot overcome their flesh the world and the devil It's the preaching and the hearing of the word that brings salvation. So he tells, he tells the people in 1 Timothy, he tells Timothy in chapter 4 of 2 Timothy. Preach the word. Reprove, rebuke. Kemea na uelekeze. That will make you popular. <laughs> How many people love to be reproved and rebuked? Je, ni wangapi wenye tunapenda kukemewa na kuelekezwa? Like Glenn was saying, uh, we have a common grandson. Ah, uh, kama uh, Clement anasema tuna And, and Glenn was Glenn was with him and he's four he's four years old and he said to Glenn his grandfather na ni kijana wa miaka 4 lakini anataka kujifananisha na You're not the boss of me. <laughs> Four years old. Miaka 4. He did not like being reproved or rebuked. Hakutaka kukemewa. Now the word there and the thought is 
bring the people to the narrow opening that leads to life. Neno hilo ni kwamba leta watu katika tundu ndogo ya kuingwa. Straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leads to life. Njia ni pana ambayo inaongoza kwa uharibifu lakini ni nyembamba ambayo inaongoza kwa uzima. That means there's tribulation there that's trying to keep you out from going in. Na kuna mambo yenye yanataka kukuzuia kutoingia katika uzima. And few there be that find it. Na wachache ndio wanaopata. But many turn aside. Lakini wengi wanakeuka. And go to their own destruction. Na wanaingia katika uharibifu wao. So Paul says reprove rebuke with all long suffering. Na Paulo anasema ya kwamba kemea ukarekebishe na subira yote. Because preacher without long suffering you cannot be a worker together with God. Kwa sababu kama hauna subira yote hauwezi fanya kazi na Mungu. When the rich young ruler came running to Jesus. Wakati yule tajiri alikuja tajiri kiongozi alikuja kwa Yesu. He says, "Good master, what must I do to have what you have?" Akasema mwalimu mwema, "Nifanye nini nikaridhi ufalme wa Mungu?" And Jesus brings him to this very small opening. Na Yesu anamleta katika dundu hili ndogo. And he says, "For you to get what I have, you have to go through this opening." Na akamwambia ukitaka chenye ninacho itabidi ukapitie katika mlango huu mdogo. When the word of God is preached it will bring you to a very small opening. Wakati neno la Mungu linaohubiriwa litakuleta katika mlango mdogo. It's a narrow opening and you look through there. Ni manya ama mlango mdogo wenye ukipitia. Your, your eye does not see your ear does not hear what is on the other side of that opening. Macho yako haioni, nia yako haioni, lakini uh, ina, inaelekeza. And you will never get through that opening or ah. you will never see unless you get through that opening. Na hauwezi pitia ama kuona ile mwanya mpaka ukapitie pale. And you look at that opening. Na ukiangalia ule mlango. The rich young ruler said, I can't go through that opening. Tajiri anasema siwezi pitia. It, it's too small. The Lord says that is not the problem. You are too big. You are too big. The problem is not. It's strange in America so many are using the gospel to teach people how to get rich. Uh, wengi marekani wanafunza watu kuhusu kujilimbikisia mali so in doing that they are making it difficult for believers to get into the kingdom of god na wakifanya hivyo wanafanya waumini wakue uh, na ugumu wa kuingia katika ufalme jesus says what great difficulty a rich man will have in getting into the kingdom of god yesu kristo akasema kwa utata mwingi tajiri the church in Laodicea said we are rich and increased with goods. We have need of nothing. That was their opinion of themselves. But then the judge came he stood at the door and he said you know not that you are poor and wretched and miserable and naked what a shock to think that we are something and then the Lord shows us we are nothing wakati Mungu anatuonyesha kwamba sisi ni bure wakati tunafikiria sisi ni kitu they they had not allowed the lord to search their heart hawakuwa wameruhusu bwana kufanya upekuzi wa mioyo and i would say that they used the blessing of god to do that na walitumia baraka za Mungu kufanya hivyo so that they could say look how blessed we are of God he must be approving us 
tupongeza. But the most blessed generation that ever lived lakini kizazi chenye kimebarikiwa sana the children of israel in the wilderness wana wa israeli nyikani who literally lived on a miracle every day wenye waliishi kwa muujiza kila siku god said of them mungu aliweza kuwaweka they always grieve my heart alisema ya kwamba kila mara wanahusunisha moyo wangu because they do not know my ways kwa sababu hawatambui njia zangu they have seen my acts wameona matendo yangu but they do not know my ways lakini hawatambui njia zangu so the lord would come to them every morning with new mercies sasa bwana angelikuja kwa wao na huruma mpya kila and day after day after day he would bless them with new mercies siku baada ya nyingine angewabariki na huruma zake mpya but they never received that day salvation lakini hawakupokea wokofu wa ile siku so that when god came the next day kwamba mungu alipokuja siku ya pili his new mercies had to serve what they were yesterday huruma zake mpya zingeweza kufanya kazi kwa matezo ya jana He had to deal with the same thing in their hearts today that he did yesterday. Alikuwa afanye kazi jambo lile lile lenye lilikuwa lifanyiwe kazi jana. And last year, na mwaka uliopita, and 20 years ago, na miaka 20 iliyopita, and great is his faithfulness, he comes and gives them new mercies again. Na uaminifu wa Mungu ni wa milele, anakuja tena anawapa huruma zake asubuhi and it's for the same reason na ni kwa sababu ile ile years ago ya miaka 20 iliyopita because they had frustrated his grace all that time kwa sababu wao wamefanya wametesa ama wamechukulia hivi hivi neema ya Mungu but Caleb is hearing his voice lakini Caleb anasikia sauti yake and when god speaks Caleb receives what god intends to give to him na wakati Mungu anasema Caleb anapokea neno lenye Mungu anasema And at the end of 40 years the Israelites die in the wilderness Na baada ya miaka 40 ya wana wa Israeli jangwani without any of the increase of the mercies that God wanted to give to them Bila kuongezeka kwa huruma za Mwenyezi Mungu Caleb said give me my mountain Caleb anasema nipatie mlima wangu because he had received of the mercies of god kwa sababu alikuwa amepokea huruma za mungu so we are at the straight gate and narrow way sasa tuko katika njia ambayo ni ndogo and if we do not endure sound doctrine na kama hatutastahamili mafunzo iliyo mema paul says there will come a time when men shall not endure sound doctrine Paulo anasema kuna wakati utafika watu hawatakuwa wa mafunzo mema. Can you endure a sword of the spirit being put into your heart? Je, unaweza stahimili upanga wa roho ukiwekwa katika roho yako? time is not the last days. Hiyo sio siku zenye zilimepita. It it may be any time in your walk with the Lord when you say in your heart inaweza kuwa wakati wowote penye bwana ananena na moyo wako i'm not in agreement with god hata kama haukubaliani na mungu and you depart from you from the living god in your heart na wewe unaondoka kwa mwenyezi mungu na moyo wako so today if you hear his voice harden not your heart sasa leo unaposikia sauti yake usifanye moyo wako mgumu quickly agree with him mara tu kubaliana na yeye because if you turn aside kwa sababu ukimkeukia yeye you're going to look for teachers utatafutia walimu that minister to the deceits of your heart ambao wanaongeleza udhaifu wa moyo wako ama and listen to how paul says this nasikiza chenye paulo anasema they will heap to themselves teachers having itching ears watachiletea walimu kwa kulingana na masikio yao yenye yamechochewa If I put two teachers over there and said there's a heap. Na nikilimbikiza walimu mahali fulani. He said that's not a heap. Ah utasema hiyo sio kundi. A heap is piled very high. 
kundi ama kurundika kitu ni kuweka pamoja pamoja mpaka juu sana Jesus said many false prophets Yesu anasema manabii wa uongo wengi You can heap them up Unaweza wakusanya wengi and they'll tell you what you want to hear. Na watakwambia chenye unataka usikie. And they will be raised up and given exaltation and given position. Na watainuliwa wapewe nyathifa na majina makubwa. But all the while they are prophesying to the deceits of the people's hearts. Lakini wananena tu kila mara kwa udanganyifu wa moyo. And if you do not go through the straight gate and narrow way. Na usipopitia njia nyembamba na na malango ndogo you will never be able to say that which i have seen that which i have heard of the word of life hawezi kusema ya kwamba chenye nimesikia chenye nimeona neno la uzima now paul uses a word for sound doctrine paulo anatumia mafunzo ya kweli sound means it's translated nine times i think in the new testament uh, hilo jina limeweza kutafsiriwa mara tisa hivi one yeah. time it's used for physical healing hiyo jina mara moja imetumika katika uponyaji wa kimwili all the other times it speaks of being sound or whole in the faith a uh, mara nyingi inaongelea kuhusu kukua sawa katika imani ama moyo or in your doctrine ama katika mafunzo uh, not up here but in here but most importantly it is the same word that is translated be in health in 1 John Paul is saying that time will come when men shall not endure be in health teaching ni kama kusema ya kwamba kuna wakati wenye utakuja watu hawatastahamili lakini kuwa wa afya njema katika maubiri yako ama They will yako. not receive the word that will bring their souls healing. Hawatapokea neno lenye linaponya nafsi zao. He sent his word and healed them. Alituma neno lake na likawaponya. So John says beloved I pray that above everything else that you would be in health but he is not measuring their health on a physical level. He is measuring our health on the spiritual level of the fullness of of the stature of the measure of Christ. Lakini anaongelea kukua kiafya kwa kimo cha Yesu Kristo. And when I look at that stature, la tukifikia kimo kile, I feel like a peep squeak. Mimi I feel very small. Nina kuwa mdogo sana kama biscuit. But he wants all of us to grow up into the fullness of the stature of Christ. Lakini anataka kila mmoja wetu akue afikie kimo cha Yesu Kristo. And all ministries and all the gifts of the spirit. Na huduma zote na karama zote za roho. They will all come to an end. Sitafikia mwisho wake. But the fullness of the stature of Christ is for all of eternity. Lakini utimilifu wa wa kimo cha Yesu Kristo ni wa milele. And the measure, the way in which we are measuring, I'll get into this at another time. Uh, well, we'll just go on from there. I'll, I'll get back to that. So he says that you would be in health and that you would prosper even as thy soul prospers. Now our brother was speaking about that which is born of the flesh is flesh, that which is born of the spirit is spirit. There are preachers that open this word and they are carnally minded. They see the word prosper. And covetousness is in their heart. 
So they say that must mean that God wants me to be rich. And so when they preach, they preach to the covetousness that's in the people's hearts. And if someone has covetousness in their hearts, their ears will hear. Na kama mtu anaiyo tama katika moyo wake na koka kwa congregation ata itikia. But if someone has a pure heart, lakini kama mtu ana they will spit that word out of their mouth. Ata ongea neno hilo kwa mdomo wake. Because the taste is not right. Kwa sababu ile hali sio jema. The word prosper in John and in the Old Testament. Hilo neno. You can check this. Means to aid in a journey. And the journey is the way everlasting. The journey is the path of the just that shineth more and more unto a day of perfection. The journey is when you get through the straight gate and narrow way and start walking on the path of life. The Bible calls Joseph a prosperous man. He owned nothing. He was a slave. He was a prisoner. But what he was on the outside did not re- well. It did not reveal what he was on the inside. And all the day, all every day, he's making good progress on the way everlasting. And he is being changed from one glory to another glory to another glory. And all around him don't know it. Even his brothers and his father don't know it. But they are waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. And the Lord says to Joseph one day, this day I will begin to magnify you for I will take that which I have hidden in you and I will begin to reveal it in all of Egypt and to your brothers. Now, let the Lord work in you. Uh, I, I, we're not going to have enough time to go through all of this, but... Uh, <coughs> In Lamentations, Jeremiah say, it says, It is good that a man both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. He becomes still inside. He doesn't try to exalt himself in any way. Waiting upon the Lord requires you to delight in the Lord. That means your heart is saying, my expectation is in him. What he wants for me is far better than what I want for myself. So I am going to delight in the Lord. And he will bring it to pass. You say, what is it? I don't know. But when he brings it to pass, you will know. <laughs> and when Abraham raised his knife, and the Lord intervenes, Abraham says, this is it. The, not, 
Isaac being spared. Not Isaac being spared. Uh, But this is why God called me out of Ur the Chaldees. To put his glory in me. To so conform me to his image. That just as God gave his own son. I have the same character. He has worked in me his glory that I am able to give my only begotten son. And the Lord says, now you are fitted to become the father of all who believe. And Abraham in his heart enters into a rest. He says, this is it. It is finished. I am an unfinished work today. <laughs> I hope that I am brought to the place where I'm able to say, this is it. Ni laiti ni natamani kuletu wa mahali penye ni tasema ya kwamba he ndio ile. And it will only be by the grace of God. Lakini itakuwa yote kwa neema ya mwenye zimu. Joseph stands before his brothers. Yusufu anasimama mbele ya manduku zake. He has a golden chain on his neck. Yeye ana ushanga wa dahabu. It means nothing to him. He has the finest suit that Pharaoh's money can buy. It means nothing to him. His brothers are bowing down before him. And it means nothing to him. He is standing there in the fullness of God. He is filled with a glory that very few men have ever been filled with. The satisfaction that God has overflowed him with that day is beyond our comprehension. He has hungered and thirsted for righteousness sake. And God has filled him with what he has hungered for. Righteousness. For the kingdom of God is righteousness. And when you have that, what follows is peace and joy. Ni amani na furaha. And he has been so made so one with God. Na sasa ako na umoja na Mungu. That for nine years he doesn't even try to contact his father after he gets out of prison. Sasa kwa miaka tisa hawezi hata kuwasiliana na baba yake wakati alitoka katika jela. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. Kwa sababu siri ya Mwenyezi Mungu iko na wale wenye wanamcha. Uh, Jeremiah says it's good to quietly wait for the Lord. The young man puts his mouth in the dust. You know when your mouth is in the dust you're not saying anything. You'll get a mouth full of dirt. But while you're not saying anything the Lord is doing things in here. People will come and misjudge you. They may lie about you. They may wrongfully accuse you. But your mouth is in the dust and you don't try to justify yourself. And all during that time the Lord is with you. And he gives you what I call tokens of his infections 
affections. Na anakupa hisia. He even uses you for things that people are not aware of. Na anakutumia kwa mambo yenye watu hata hawawezi tambua. Jeremiah says that young man sits alone and he keeps silent. Na Jeremiah anasema kijana akiketi peke yake na ametulia. So David's family says, where's David? Jamii ya Daudi inasema wapi Daudi? Ah, he's up there keeping some sheep. Ah, yeye yuko kule anachunga kondoo. Nobody else would take the job. Hakuna yeyote katika hiyo jamii angechukua hiyo kazi. And while he's up there with the sheep, the Lord comes and visits him. Na akiwa kule akichunga kondoo, Bwana anamtembelea. And David says of those visits. Na Daudi anasema kuhusu mtembeo ule. The law of the Lord is perfecting me. Ya kwamba upendo wa Mungu unanikamilisha. The commandments that he gave me during that time. Uh, amri zenye alipewa wakati ule. Purified my heart. Ilikuwa ikiweza kusafisha moyo wangu. And whenever you have a pure heart it enlightens your eyes. Wakati unakuwa na moyo safi inafunua macho yako pia. How does the Lord anoint your eyes with eye salve? Na ni vipi Mungu anapaka mafuta macho yako? By purifying your heart. Kwa kuweza kusafisha moyo wako. Blessed are the pure in heart. Wamebarikiwa wenye moyo safi. For they shall see God. Maana watamuona Bwana. The testimonies of the Lord are sure making wise the simple. Uh, ushuhuda wa Bwana ni hakika unatia nuru ama inatia hekima wanyenyekevu. The world the word simple means easily seduced. Neno hilo wanyenyekevu ni wenye wanaweza kutongozwa haraka. Until the Lord makes us simple we are easily seduced. Kama Mungu ata, hata tufanya tukue wanyenyekevu tutakuwa watu wa kushikwa haraka. We are easily fall. Tutaweza anguka. So that haraka. you find tens and hundreds of thousand people worshiping rock groups rock music groups kuna watu utaona 1500 ngapi wanaabudu muziki ule wa and and that's just one in one of many ways of being easily seduced yani ni rahisi sana kushikwa kutekwa nyara but while you have your mouth in the dust the lord's doing good things for you lakini wakati mdomo wako uko katika mafumbi mungu when david came and said to saul na daudi akaja akaambia sauli he had not told anyone. Hakuwa ameambia mtu yoyote. No one knew. Hakuna yeyote mwenye alijua. Thy servant speaking of himself. Akisema mtumishi wako has killed a lion. Ameua simba and a bear. Na tupu. If I would have killed a lion. Kama naweza ua simba. All the world would have known about it. Nikiua simba ulimwengu wote utajua. I would have come down off the mountain yelling, I killed the lion, I killed the lion, I killed the lion. Ningekuwa nimembeba nikitangaza nikisema nimeua simba, nimeua simba. Do you know when David kept that secret in his heart it was doing a powerful work in him? Je, unajua ya kwamba Daudi aliponyamazia hiyo ilikuwa ikitenda kazi kuu ndani mwake? Joseph stands before his brothers. Anasimama mbele ya manduku zake. He hasn't told him them who he is. Hajawaambia yeye ni nani. It's a secret that only he knows. Ni siri tu yenye yeye anajua. But he's He's delighting in doing the will of God. Lakini yeye anafurahia na kutekeleza mapenzi ya Mwenyezi. And he is waiting for something to take place. Na anangojea mambo fulani yakatekelezwe. And he says he he arranges things so that his full brother Benjamin. Na anafanya hayo mpaka nduku yake mkuu Benjamin is made to seem like he's guilty and should be thrown in prison anafanywa ahisi hatia ndiye ashikwe awekwe katika gereza and juda steps forward na yuda anasimama mbele juda was the one who said let's sell joseph into slavery yuda ndiye alikuwa mwenye alipendekeza akasema tuuze huyu mjamaa and of course joseph knew that na yusufu alijua hiyo 
And he's waiting to hear what Judah has to say. And God had done a great work in Judah while Joseph was in prison. And, and Judah's sin caused him not to be able to have a relationship with Jacob, his father. And every time, no wonder God hates sin. Every time that Judah looked at Jacob, he saw his sin in the face of Jacob. And his heart condemned him. But even with that, and because of that, God did a work in Judah's heart. And when Joseph says, I'm taking Benjamin, the grace of God in Judah says, No, take me. If you want to kill me, kill me. But do not hurt this boy, for if you hurt him, it will crush my father, and I have seen enough pain in my father's face. I don't want to see any more. Na anasema analia anasema ya kamba kama utachukua mdu mtu ata kumuwa ni uwe mimi usichukue huyu mtoto Benjamini kwa sababu gani staki husuni ile tena iende kwa baba yangu nimeona husuni mwingi kwa baba yangu and when Joseph heard that na wakati Yusufu alisikia hiyo he said this is it akasema hi ndiyo this this is why all of the pain, this is why all of my suffering. This is it. I have delighted in the Lord and he has brought it to pass. Cause every man to go out from here I am going to have a hallelujah breakdown that few have ever known. <laughs> and he begins to weep and wail in a way that men could not understand. Proverb says the soul knows its own bitterness. The soul knows its own bitterness. But no one can intermeddle with his joy. No man could share in that joy that Joseph had. It said they heard him wailing down the halls of Pharaoh's buildings far away. It was the joy that few have ever experienced. The Amplified Bible says, let him keep silent. Let, let him bear the reproach. For that is for a season. And it will work a work of changing that man from one glory to another glory to another glory. You have been given something very precious. It is life. An earthly life. You have certain strengths, you have certain weaknesses. You have things perhaps that you despise about yourself. You may say in your heart, why have you made me thus and so? Why didn't you make me this way or that way? 
vingine. Why wasn't I born in Kwa nini nilizaliwa ni si kuzaliwa mahali fulani? Why wasn't I born in Canada? Kwa nini si kuzaliwa Kenya? None of that matters. Uh, None of those things matter. The Lord has given you life and he has given you a heart. It belongs to you and you alone. And he comes to you. And it says a new covenant I am going to write with them. And they all shall know me na wote watanijua from the least to the greatest kutoka kwa mdogo hadi mkubwa and it is not our position that matters na ni hakuna sehemu yenye inajalisha is what we allow the lord to do in our heart that chenye, matters chenye kinajalisha ni chenye tunaruhusu mungu kufanya kazi ndani mwetu we say i have received jesus into my heart we never think about what a small dark place we've asked him to live in <laughs> we, we never think about what a small dark place we have asked him to live in when he came into Saul of Tarsus of heart he, he had to crouch down he looked around he said it's so dark in here it's so small I don't see one Gentile in here there's not room in this heart for one Gentile he said I've got to enlarge his heart the Lord wants to enlarge your heart he wants to make your heart a mansion he wants to decorate it with gold and silver and precious stones he wants to fill it with food so that when he says to you feed the multitudes you don't look at your five loaves and two fishes or whatever they were you look in here at the supply of God when God was finished with Saul of Tarsus it becomes the heart of Paul the Apostle and he says oh ye Corinthians they were all Gentiles he said you are in my heart to die and to live with the Lord has come to you and me and he wants to beautify our heart and you can say you don't have to out loud he wants to beautify my heart. It's my heart. It belongs to me. He's given it to me. And when I come back to him, I want to give it back to him. And I want to say, here, Lord, it's no longer my heart. It's your heart. It's what you have done with it. It's what I have allowed you to do with it. Let's pray. Father, we lift up our hearts to you. We come to you in all meekness and loneliness of heart we come to you as David did we come to you poor and needy we pray search my heart O Lord reveal to me what I cannot see Reveal to me that which needs to be healed. 
And above all things, let me have an amen to your word in my heart. So Lord, we lift up our hearts to you this moment. Let's stand together. Change my heart, O oh God, make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God, may I be like you. Change my heart, O oh God, make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God. Change my heart.